Hello, I'm Dr Pam Blundell from the Institute of Psychological Sciences at the University of Leeds and today I'm going to be telling you about animal experimentation in psychology. Animal experimentation is obviously a controversial issue and so today what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you some of the ways in which it's contributed to psychological knowledge, some of the ethical issues surrounding experimental animal work and the legal framework in which we operate in the UK. Animal experimentation has given us a view into the way in which animals operate within their environment, the way in which animals change their environments and the relationship between different animals and the way that they use their environments. Work with animals has told us about stress and disease and has suggested to us ways in which we can ameliorate the effects of stress on health. Animal work has had a huge influence on our discipline. But why do we need to use animals for psychology? Well, psychology is the science of behaviour. And in order to study behaviour, you need organisms. A cell line can't show behaviour. A computer model can't show behaviour. And therefore, in order to study behaviour, we need to use whole, intact animals. There are, of course, advantages to using animals as well. By using animals, we can improve the amount of control we have in an experiment. By using animals, we can carry out experiments that we couldn't possibly with humans, looking at the effects of things like genetic manipulations and manipulations of the brain. We can also look at the effects of drugs on animal behaviour. So how does using animals help us to improve experimental control? By using animals, we can reduce bias within an experiment. Animals don't have an existing belief about what the outcome of an experiment will be, and animals don't use reason in order to figure out what the experimenter is actually trying to do. If we're looking at something like acquisition of timing behaviours, humans will use language, they will count in order to try and time an interval, whereas animals don't have that ability available to them. How has animal work made recent contributions? Well, one example is looking at the human problem of anticipatory nausea and vomiting. Anticipatory nausea and vomiting is a problem which human cancer patients suffer from, where an association becomes formed between the hospital environment and nausea, meaning that when humans go to the hospital in order to receive their treatment, they actually start to show some sickness, even before the treatment is administered. And behavioural experiments in rats have contributed to our understanding of the psychological processes behind that problem. It is, of course, difficult to study something like that with humans who are undergoing cancer treatment and even with normal humans. A great deal of work at the moment is being carried out on animals looking at the effects of particular genes, how they contribute to cognitive development, but also how they lead to problems in later life, such as with Alzheimer's research. So we can induce genetic manipulations in mice and use those to study human disease. So for example, a recent study has taken mice and bred mice with a mutation of the human tau protein. But what's particularly clever about this study is that the tau protein, which is associated with Alzheimer's disease, can be switched on and off. And so we can look at the effects of this gene at different times. In this study, when they turned the tau gene on, the mice became very poor at learning to navigate a maze. However, when the tau gene was turned off, subsequently, the mice regained their ability to learn the maze, showing that the effects of this protein are not irreversible. This gives us a huge opportunity for looking at medicine for Alzheimer's disease. Work in animals has also given us a huge insight into how the brain actually does learning, how different parts of the brain are involved in different activities. So, for example, work with rats that have got electrodes implanted into their hippocampus have demonstrated that the hippocampus forms a spatial map. This tells us the role of the hippocampus as animals learn to navigate around their environment, which is obviously a very important evolutionary adaptation. We can also look at the effects of drugs on behaviour in animals, something which is difficult to do with humans. So, for example, administration of amphetamine produces something called sensitisation, so that subsequently the effects of amphetamine 
are bigger if an animal has previously been administrated with it. This is important for understanding drug addiction. But additionally, what we actually find is that animals that have been sensitised to amphetamine are subsequently faster at learning Pavlovian conditioning. This gives us important insights into the effects of drugs on behaviour and how drug addiction may be a multifaceted problem. So I've given you an overview of some of the ways in which animal experimentation has contributed to our current knowledge of psychology. Now I'm going to tell you a little bit about the ethics. The animal rights debate centres upon a number of different issues. There are moral issues, what you view as being morally correct or morally wrong. There are legal issues. Within different countries there is a different legal framework. There are issues of biology, whether you think animal experiments actually tell us anything about the human condition. And finally, there are issues of custom. Within different cultures, some animals have got different status. Of course, before we can talk about animal rights, we must decide what we view as being an animal. Primates, mammals, they're obviously animals. Lizards, fish, they're obviously animals. What about flies? Should slugs be protected under the law? What about other insects? Whereabouts do you draw the line? You might like to just stop and have a discussion of this at this point. The traditional justification for animal experimentation is that animals are not members of the moral community and therefore their lives have little value and therefore we are free to exploit them as we wish. The modern justification for animal research is the justification by benefit. The advantages of doing animal research are huge. Given these huge advantages, it's worth some small suffering by animals in order that we can make the most of these benefits. Undoubtedly, the medical benefits of animal research are huge, ranging from Alzheimer's through to cancer through to diabetes and many, many other disorders. Many things which are now treatable previously weren't, and this is in huge thanks to animal experimentation. Seven out of ten of the last Nobel Prizes for medicine have involved animal experimentation. It's undoubtable that the benefits are huge. However, ethically, is it right that we subject animals to pain and suffering in order that we can benefit? As psychologists, we have something to contribute to this debate, because as psychologists, we understand animal behaviour. Understanding animal behaviour is necessary in order that we can assess if animals are in pain or if animals are suffering. We can't ask an animal if it is in pain, we can't ask an animal if it is suffering, and therefore we have to use behavioural methods in order to assess that. And so the first point I would like you to take home from this is that actually psychology, as well as using animals, is very useful in terms of knowing how to improve the lives of animals that are in research, but also that are used by humans in other ways. There are many arguments made against animal use. The first argument is that animals are different to humans. Their biology is different. Therefore, how can we actually learn anything that's relevant to us? Well, their biology actually isn't that different. Animals make a very good model, and all of the time scientists will acknowledge that the animals are an imperfect model, but normally a different aspect of disease is being modelled anyway. There are also philosophical arguments against the use of animals in experimentation. There's the utilitarian philosophy, which is because animals suffer pain, they're entitled to the same respect that we give humans. There's the life philosophy, that because animals are alive, their lives are as valuable as ours.